Well, 5.5 gigahertz is a lot of gigahertz and 31% faster than a 12900K sounds good. What are all of the details? We got AMD's uh, Computex announcement of their Ryzen 7000 and AM5 platform. Let's hop right in. So the basic idea is that they're announcing the first five nanometer uh, PC processor cores, the Zen 4 CPU core chiplets. And to me, one of the most exciting things about this is actually that it looks like even the high-end ones are gonna be coming with the integrated RDNA 2 graphics this time around. Whereas in the past, it's always been their G series that has the graphics and it, you know, the, uh, they didn't have like the newest graphics architecture. So I'm actually really curious what sort of gaming performance we might get off of RDNA 2 graphics bundled into these and what that might do for the very low end entry level gaming segment, because I think it, with graphics card prices where they've been, uh, it's been really hard to find a really low price entry level point into that. So I'm interested there. Now, ah, right here, we see Zen 4 architecture uh, giving us one megabyte per core L2 cache. They're saying greater than 15% single thread uplift. Now, if you read the footnote here, what they're measuring was a uh, 5950X up against the Ryzen 7000 16 core 32 thread variant, which they didn't specifically name as a 7950X, but that would be what we would expect it to be called. And this is a pre-production engineering sample getting this. And I believe that was in Cinebench looking at its single thread performance. Also, we're seeing five gigahertz plus max boost. Now max boost is talking about a single thread for short bursts. And they're also mentioning expanded instruction sets for AI acceleration. Now, if we jump into uh, the, the more exciting headline, wait, five gigahertz plus, where are we seeing this 5.5 gigahertz clock speed while gaming? Basically, they showed off Ghostwire Tokyo and they did show live gameplay running on this, and they did show a, a little tiny <laughs> uh, bit of a clock speed just for a few seconds, and it said 5.5 gigahertz. Now there's some questions here about how many of the cores were running at that speed and for how long, because again, a max boost is only promising a single core. We also weren't told whether or not this was overclocked, or running at stock specifications. However, I did watch this live and I'm fairly certain I remember her saying the cores, plural, S at the end, when this was happening, but could she be misspeaking or, you know, I don't know. So there's still some questions about that. But I can tell you right now that my 5950X will only very occasionally hit five gigahertz just for a split second. So going up to 5.5 gigahertz here does look pretty good and should uh, definitely help out with some gaming performance. Now, another big thing we've got going here is that, I'll just pop out of the way, we are gonna have three different motherboards uh, at launch here with the X670E Extreme, the X670, and the B650. And they're listing out some of the main differences here. Looking like a lot of it comes down to how much PCIe 5.0 support we're getting here, where the B650 will get it for storage. Now, speaking of storage, we should be seeing PCIe 5.0 drives coming out with the launch of this platform in the fall according to AMD at this event. Now we're seeing here PCIe 5.0 to one NVMe slot, and then they could add in graphics card slot support here as well. So it looks like some boards will have that and some won't. And then on the extreme version, we're seeing uh, PCIe 5.0 to two graphics slots and an NVMe slot as the main change there. Now, overall, this I think is the maximum amounts if, if all of it was fully supported on a board 
getting 24 PCIe 5.0 lanes for storage and graphics, up to 14 super speed USB with 20 gigabit per second and type C. Um, so USB connections here. Uh, 6E Wi-Fi support with DBS, BT, and LE 5.2, and up to four HDMI 2.1 and DisplayPort ports. So lots of good connectivity there and all of that. We're already seeing specific uh, motherboards being launched, and you can dig into that from the various brands. So overall, looks like tons of uh, PCIe 5.0 available, lots of uh, connectivity. This all looks like good stuff. And again, we are seeing that the uh, PCIe 5.0 NVMe drives should be available around launch time. And what kind of performance should we see? They're projecting up to 60% faster sequential reads with the PCIe 5.0 versus 4.0. So, I mean, 4.0 is already really fast, but you know, nothing wrong with getting even more. Now, the maybe, at least to me, <laughs> less exciting stuff they talked about was some of their Ryzen 6000, um, you know, AMD Advantage laptop platform stuff, and then uh, talked even more about where they're planning to go with that. Now, one thing that's very interesting to me, but we didn't get as much info about as I would have liked, and I'd like to dive into this more in the future, is AMD Smart Access Storage. So I would hinted a, in a previous video that this is going to be a thing, but what kind of a thing is it? I said, I think it has to be more than just direct storage or they wouldn't be branding it as its own thing. But I speculated that it's probably designed to support that in some way. And it looks like I was pretty much right about that, although we still need more details. So. Basically, they're saying traditional game loading takes a significant amount of compute power to decompress the game's data, requiring the CPU to do the decompression and data transfer, uh, which introduces latency and takes up considerable system resources. Now, the initial version of direct storage that's being supported on Windows, I believe is still doing the decompression on the CPU. So this seems like it's designed to be helping alleviate that. So it's saying to help bypass these bottlenecks, AMD has created smart access storage, a suite of, a suite of technologies. So lots of stuff going on here, supporting Microsoft direct storage. So it's supporting it. And it says that, uh, that it, it utilizes smart access memory, but not just smart access memory. So with new AMD platform technologies, along with Radeon GPU asset decompression. So again, they're saying GPU asset decompression to improve both game load times and texture streaming. So to me, this at least sounds like a little bit more than just direct storage, at least in its current format, but that's all they went into. That's all we got. Now, what about the other big uh, performance headline we'd seen here with this, wait, 31% faster than a 12900K in content creation. So that is coming down to this piece of the presentation where we saw, boom, I'll disappear out of your way, uh, them showing a Blender time-lapse demo here of a 12900K rendering this Ryzen chip and the Ryzen 7000 series rendering it. And they said this is the 16 core uh, 32 thread variant. So what we would assume would probably be the 7950X if they continue the naming scheme that we would expect. And they did show it uh, finish 31% faster in a Blender render utilizing all cores. Now that's certainly interesting, um, but one thing to keep in mind here is as this WCCF tech article um, I'm looking at here points out that the you know 16 core 32 thread chip is 32 threads versus the 24 threads on a 12900K, uh, given that the efficiency cores in the 12900K ob uh, aren't hyper threading. So. Um, I wouldn't, again, expect, you know, this isn't saying that they have 31% faster single core performance, right? That's not what we're seeing here. So this is, and then again, this is versus the 12900K. And, you know, when are we getting Intel's 13th gen out to compete against this? So 
Uh, those are all questions, but it's certainly nice to see a 31% advantage here. I don't want to diminish that at all. So um, again, these were all the, the various footnotes on, on the uh, testing, but I think I mentioned the important stuff uh, as we summarized all of this. So uh, other quick news I might mention is just that it does also look like Corsair is entering the laptop, a laptop segment now and kind of announced alongside this with an all AMD powered Voyager A1600 laptop. Uh, looks to be a pretty high-end offering here. And uh, was there anything else I wanted to talk about? They did seem to mention or hint at uh, AM4 platform support continuing for years to come. Although in what format that means, who knows? Although we're still seeing Zen 2 chips announced uh, from time to time like now. So it wouldn't surprise me if we did continue to see some sort of a Zen 3 update, but there'll at least be, I'm sure, you know, software updates and support uh, along those lines, even if we don't get new CPUs. And then, um, so yeah, I think I already talked about the motherboards here. So one of the little uh, laptop type updates we saw is we could be seeing some, uh, you know, cheaper $399 to $699 AMD laptops coming with, like I said, a Zen 2, for example, CPU, but with RDNA 2 graphics, um, which could be interesting at this price point, uh, depending on what kind of, you know, uh, graphics uh, horsepower that ended up having. And on an unrelated note, but I might as well report it in my hardware news video today, it looks like the 3050 and the 3080 12 gigabyte version, which did not have their light hash rate algorithms unlocked along with everything else, uh, look like they've been at least unlocked up to 90%. So further increasing their crypto mining performance. Although at this point with crypto prices, hopefully staying down from my perspective as a gamer wanting GPUs to price, <laughs> price well, I don't think this would have a huge impact on our um, on our current pricing and supply of GPUs, although this could be good news for people who are maybe still trying to mine a little bit off of those. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.